Hey, what's up, everybody? This is uh, Matt from uh, Brooko. This is Ivory. What's up, everybody? Happy Friday. Happy Friday, everybody. And today we're talking about, you know, active versus passive brotherhood, man. Like the, you know, like just the pros and cons of each. Like, I'll be honest, there really is no pros to passive brotherhood. I put that out there. But, you know, just so you can kind of get an idea when you connect with other people, other guys, man, just let you know, give you kind of signs to say, okay, you know, this is what good brotherhood, active brotherhood is, and this is what passive brotherhood. Just to kind of put it out there, man, like, when we say active, we mean, like, we mean like active brotherhood. We're really talking about, like, actually making steps and, and, and taking steps to actually, you know, build bonds and connections. Passive brotherhood is when somebody is not really, you know, actively or purposely trying to create kind of bonds and, you know, and just kind of talking about the differences, you know, I, I had a lot of passive brothers in my in my life that I think now I have a less tolerance for it a little bit. Um, you know, now I kind of look for more active brotherhood. What, what's been kind of your like past experience, Ivy? What have you kind of come to the conclusion with so far? Well, yeah, I think that's important. This is an important topic. The reason why it's a very important topic is because, I mean, we're, we're having a generational shift from the, the, the people that came before us to our generation, the millennials, and the, the people that's underneath the millennials, we have like this, this sort of a difference in power shifts. So back in that day, in that time, men were, you know, I would say, I wouldn't say they were passive, but I, I do notice it was like, well, you know, you don't want to ruffle any feathers. You want to get along, go along to get along, or you want to just kind of go with the flow. And now you have guys that's like, no, like I'm cool with going with the flow in some cases. But and when you, when you talk about brotherhood and connecting and being a brother where you can be not necessarily aggressive, but you don't want to be passive. You don't want to be the guy that that goes from, you know, like like people don't really know what you stand for or you don't like Matt said, you don't kind of reach out to people to. To, to actually build those type of relationships. So I just think for me, ne- the, the passive brotherhood is where it's like kind of like hands off. Hey man, I'm going through an issue. I'll send you a text message. Hey man, let's, 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 <clears throat> you know, anything that re- re- revolves energy and effort is going to be a passive, um, passive solution to that. But we'll get more into that. But I, you know, I'm just kind of rambling right now about it. Yeah, so I think we need to start talking a little bit about <clears throat> active brotherhood, and I think we can kind of share a little bit about how we kind of became more active in our own, like, pursuit of connecting with other guys. So I, I, th- I think for me, like, I think the first place where I saw, like, active brotherhood was probably in high school. So I went to CAS, I transferred to a school in Brother Rice, and, you know, they had a lot of connections. So one thing that I would see a lot of times is that it was a group of guys from Milford. They would carpool with each other. You know, you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, you, you know, they, it's like five or six, like I said, and they were kind of carpooling two or three cars. And they, it was, it, you know, so they, you know, they wait for each other after school. If one person was running track, the other one didn't, they kind of wait. So, it, you know, it, it was a lot of kind of connections that they had, you know, and I, and I think it was like kind of more purposeful. And I think when I was kind of growing up, you know, with, you know, being around some of the, the guys and, you know, it, it was more so like, hey, man, you know, we might hang out around sports or other things. But, you know, when it, but we really didn't have strong bonds, you know, so it's kind of like, you know, it really didn't happen like that. So you, if you remember being a kid, you might have one one person's house who everybody went over, but you couldn't go over his, like he had come over your house and he would play your video game, but you couldn't go over his house and play his video game because he was selfish or everybody would come to your house and play on a basketball court, but it, was, it wasn't really shared. So I kind of saw that kind of, you know, being in high school a little bit more, I started understanding that better, you know, and I think one of the things as I kind of came out of college, you know, trying to connect with the brothers, I saw like a lot of passive brotherhood, you know, like Ivory said, like if you were going through something, you were kind of fending for yourself, you know, and I think that, you know, I think I had some of those characteristics too. Like I didn't necessarily really think about like active brotherhood. And one of the things that I started realizing is that, hey, if I'm going through something, I want to be able to connect with somebody, you know, like, you know, like if, if, if I'm down on some money for a minute and I need to borrow a thousand dollars, I want somebody I can connect with. If I need somebody kind of, you know, put in connection for me for a career job or look out for me I wanted those kind of connections but in order for me to get those kind of connections I had to actively offer something tangible in return you know to get that and you know and I think that you know just kind of find I kind of bumped my head a few times you connect with certain guys and it really wouldn't really pan out like that you know um you know and I, I think for me over time I just kind of learned that okay you know what I have to actively like make time to hang with somebody if it's their birthday send them something and then look for them to reciprocate that back you know, that's kind of how, kind of how I kind of slowly started to think more about active brotherhood. 
And the more I went through, the more I realized, like, man, you know, I'm having a relationship problem. Let me call my, let me call my, let me call one of my best friends and talk it out, man. So that's kind of how I came to it. How did you kind of come around to it, Ira? Yeah, I, I agree. I, a lot of what you said, I kind of can relate to that as well. And that's why we're having this conversation. I, I, I just think for me, it's, it's nurturing that relationship. When you meet somebody that you connect with, you, you vibe, maybe you vibe over sports, whatever it is, you want to kind of like start off where there's mutual connection. Like case in point, like how you and I met, we met going to a party. I met you at your cousin's party and we just talked about stocks. We talked about home ownership, things that we both were already initially interested in. And we built the bond from there. We, we just kind of started from there, but it was active in a sense that you called me, I called you. It was a game of tennis. It was, I hit the ball over, you hit the ball back. It was active. We were, hey man, let's hang out. Let's go grab some food. And we would just start by having conversations and doing things like going places and doing things. And then you just built this natural bond. And so it just makes it so much easier when you, you're in fellowship with someone, you build that bond and you can make that connection. You want to be good to your, your homeboys. You want to deliver. You want to be able to be that listening ear when that person has some type of issue or trouble. You don't want to be that person when you it's a situation and this is what I call situational brotherhood, where it's a specific issue, and that's the only time you hear from that person. I'm sure you guys, if you watch, if you're watching this, you have friends in your life, relatives or family members in your life, where man, they ain't checking for you at all until they have a situation, an issue. The rent need to be paid. They lost their job, broke, break, you know, some type of breakup. Then they come running, and then they want to connect with you. And so what we're talking about, when we talk about passive versus proactive brotherhood, proactive brotherhood seeks to be in fellowship and connection with brothers before that stuff happens. Because I, I tell you what, I mean, it's just human nature. When you, when you see somebody call you and they only call you when they need something, you're less likely to want to connect with that person. You're less likely to want to even do anything for that person. You may drag your feet. You may not even want to connect with that person. But when you, you're in fellowship with someone, and you connect with that person on a regular basis, I mean, you want to help that person. Yeah, definitely, Ivy. And I think the one thing I'll say too, I'm kind of putting it out there as a disclaimer, you know, some dudes are some dudes are passive, right? They're like, man, I'm not trying to put that kind of energy into the relationship or getting to know somebody, I don't care. And that's cool. Just don't expect active results. You know, just don't, re so, so, so if, you, if you're somebody who's right. saying, you know what, man, I ain't got time for that, man, I ain't trying to connect with no dudes, forget all that. That's cool, bro, you know? You know, that's cool, man. But when you lose your job, bro, don't call me, bro. Don't exactly. call me, bro. I, I don't, you know what I'm saying? I'm, if you call me, you're like, hey, man, I lost my job. I'm, I'm going to pray for you. That's <laughs> it. You get in the text. You call me with an emergency, man. You call me with an emergency. You know what I'm saying? Sorry, I can't talk right now. That's yep. what it is. You know, that's what's going to be. And then just kind of getting more into like passive brotherhood, man. You know, um, I say a little bit because I say a little bit and I kind of let you go, Ivy, because you always do a good job of really talking about this. But I think just an example of like passive brotherhood, one of the things that you would see, you know, if, if you watch some of our stuff and you watch some of the YouTube shorts talk about Christian brothers, like, you know, I had a little short about your father dying, somebody giving you a Christian verse. It, it goes back to like when you come to them with actual real problems, you know, they hit you with a one, two solution or, no, you know, it's like, hey, man, I'm I mean, you know, I've been stressed out lately. Oh man, you, just, you know, man, I feel for you, man. And that's it. it, it it's like, oh man, sorry to hear that. It, 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 it requires no effort, you know, you know, and, and, you know, and then, so if you run it, you know, it requires no effort, no input, no solutions, man. So but I'll let you talk a little bit more, Ari, because I think you always do a good job talking about kind of like passive brotherhood and what to watch yeah. out for. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I've experienced that myself. I've experienced situations where I, I was more of the, of the I, it's just part of my nature. I would say it's my nature to be proactive. I'm a proactive type person. So it matters to me in my relationships, I'm proactive. I, I make sure that the people, you know, I call it like the fab five, like everybody, you got a rotation of five people in your life that's that's that are gonna be your closest people in your life. And these rotate, it rotates from every decade. I remember five, the five, my top five people that were in my life 10 years ago, like three of them are no longer there. And so I have three new people in the rotation. And this is just the circle of life and you have to be okay with that. So I'm okay with that part because people come and go. But what I'm saying is, is that when you are 
when you are building these relationships with people, you have to start paying attention to what they say and what they do. Not just, not just, you know, from a temporary perspective when they just say, hey, man, I'm praying for you or, hey, bro, you know, you know, I got your back. You got to listen to those things, but you also got to you also got to pay attention to their actions as well, because I give you a point, a case in point. I had a, a really good friend in my life that we were friends for a long time. And this was one of my closest homeboys. And I love this dude. I mean, this dude was, you know, just a cool guy. And I, you know, we were, we were, we were social friends and I didn't put him quite in that, that category of just being a social friend. And I put him, he was more to me than I was to him. And it was kind of like this imbalance. So he could come to me with his issues and he will have major issues. I'm talking about major life issues. And I will give this guy like my time, my energy, my effort, sometimes my resources, a listening ear, good insights. And it was good for him. I mean, he felt the value of my friendship and brotherhood in his life. And then, and so he, he got that part. But when it was come time for me to get that, the reciprocation, like you said, Matt, to reciprocate, like it was, it was kind of like the generic, oh, bro, it's going to be okay. Oh mm -hmm. yeah. I, I hear you on that, bro. But Hey man, Hey, I got to get running, bro. I got, I got X, Y, and Z to do. And you realize that, wait a minute, hold on. This is kind of like a trade imbalance. This is kind of mm -hmm. like, I'm giving more than I'm receiving. And so this person, I'm making more deposits in that person and they're taking more withdrawals. You're going to have an imbalance and that imbalance is going to affect you negatively, psychologically, mentally, emotionally, and sometimes even financially. And so for me, I had to recognize that by listening to what this person was saying and watching what they do. And case in point, I had an issue like this was probably six months, eight months ago, Matt, you know what I'm talking about with this, but I had an issue. I had a the big decision I need to make. And I was like stressed. I was like, really like, man, I don't know how I'm going to make this decision. And I didn't want to always be in my head. So I was like, let me lean on some of my homeboys. I asked about a good three or four of my closest friends. And one of the guys that, you know, I, I asked him that same exact question, like, hey, man, what do you think I should do? And I, I really needed that person's advice. And y'all want to know what that person told me, man? I'm not going to spill the beans. But basically, they told me, hey, man, I got X, Y, and Z to do. I And, and it, it was like, hey, I need, I told him, like, look, I need, I need you right now. I really need you right now, bro. He told me I got, I got A, B, and C to do, X, Y, and Z to do. And he didn't even offer no type of, hey, man, you know, I'm, I'm going to catch, I'm going to get back with you, bro. I got to handle some business real quick, but I'm going to get right back to you. It was just like, man, I got this to do. Um, good luck with that. And that really kind of showed me like, oh, okay, I, I see what it is. But this person, I've been at this person, I went to bat for this person in so many ways. So basically what I'm saying is, is I really paid attention to what this person was saying, but more importantly, what this person was doing and it didn't line up. So they got to get, they had to get kicked out the rotation. Yeah. And, you know, one thing I'll say this too, and I think you always kind of uh, talked about this. I agree. I think like, I think it was a point in time where we can talk for like three or four months. And I think, I think I called you, I think you were, uh, you were, I think at that time you had got the Tesla, you were, you know, because you, I know you can kind of get it for like two weeks to see if you want it or not. I know you, you had the Tesla. And I think I told you, I think I told you afterwards, I was like, oh man, I ain't talked to you in a while. Hey man, what's your address? I sent you some AirPods. I lie. I was wondering <laughs> right there, I was speaking to him because it's kind of like, I knew like, man, I ain't talked to this dude in a minute, you know? And I, it's getting to my next point. It's like, you know, sometimes even for me, I could be a passive brother. I cannot be always the most connected. Sometimes it's come with a peace offering. You know what I'm saying? You don't even got to say a lot of stuff. You don't even have to, you don't have to go, man, I was going to actually say, hey, man, sorry about that. I brought you something. That can go a long way to say, hey, man, I thought about you, man. I sent you something. Because, you know, sometimes guys, you ain't always going to talk it out like that. Just be like, hey, man, you know, I think uh, Michael Jordan talked about it in The Last Dance, how Dennis Robin had messed up one day. And he said, Dennis Robin knocked on his, on his hotel room, never knocked on his hotel room and said, hey, you got an extra cigar? He said, they didn't talk, they just smoked a cigar. And he knew that was Dennis Robin saying, hey, I'm sorry. And that's kind of it sometimes. It's like, you know, you just make a peace offering. You know, say okay. People like okay, man, that's cool. Like you know, we, we you know we, we can, you know, because sometimes if you if you if you if you if you yourself are practicing that, just come with a peace offering. Peace offering. If somebody if somebody's birthday they ask for sixty dollars, give them a hundred. You know, just come up with something to kind of say okay, this dude care. You ain't got you. Sometimes you don't even have to always say anything. You just just say hey, man, my bad, bro, and just do something like that. That goes a long way. And, and the one thing I wanted to say too is like, and I know you can talk about this too, Iris. Like if you're dealing with passive brotherhood, like. Sometimes just address it. You give people chances to actually kind of like, you know, if you got a, somebody you really cared about, you know, in your own way, just kind of say, hey, man, like, I feel like you weren't a good brother over here. Like when this happened and that happened, 
just give them a chance to kind of actually kind of come around because sometimes they may be doing their own thing, but if they kind of show you they're not actively willing to, 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 to change or be a little bit better, you have to let it go. And I will say this too, like, I know for me, if I'm dealing with, with dudes who are past, but I dealt that in my past, you're not going to instantly, you know, like, because over time you can still be cool with them in a social way, like I was saying, but initially I, I'm not able to do that sometimes. Sometimes I'm like, I can't hang with you. I got to find more active brotherhood. And once you find more consistent brothers, then you might be able to hang with this dude on some social stuff and that's it, you know, but I, I think too, so it's like, if you deal with that, the one thing I say, man, I, you know, I want to hear your opinion too, Ivory. Like, you know, if, if you do, you know, sometimes give them a chance to kind of address it. If they're not, and if you're the passive dude, you know, maybe you come and you say, hey, man, you kind of address it and say, hey, man, I want us to be more active. You know, if it doesn't work out, you know what I'm saying? You might just say, okay, you know what? I can't really be around this circle of people right now. Let me find people who are actively looking for better brotherhood. And then, you know, once I find that actual real circle, then I could connect with you on some social social stuff. Did I cuss, man? I was trying not to. I'm so used to So I can connect with you. Uh, you know, we can go to the Pistons game. I know people Pistons suck. Maybe you, maybe you out there in San Francisco, so you're going to a Golden State game, whatever the case may be. You know, and that's it. And that's it, bro. Because you yeah. can't win with them. You can't. You can't. You know, you can't. You can't play with them. You can't be, I'm, I'm sorry, like Mike Singletary. But no, what you, what's your what's your opinion, Ivo? No, I, I think you're right. You mentioned peace offering, and that's critical. That's critical for guys because I think guys, we're we're real simple dudes, man. Like. It don't take much to, to get forgiveness, man. I, you know, I, I'm not going to say women and men and all that, but for guys, I just know for me, it, you know, hey, man, my bad, bro. It ain't got to be I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? It's like my bad, bro. I, I get what that means, you know? It's like, okay, that's that's my man trying to say my bad. Or, hey, man, let me, like Matt said, let me get you some AirPods and take you to a game. Man, I, bro, you, you know, reiterating the importance of that person's value in your life because you don't want to be that guy. Like, you don't want to be that guy when you have a death in the family, a layoff, a miscarriage or a breakup mm. or some type of catastrophic situation. Or if God forbid, you got to go to jail and you need somebody to bail you out. You don't want all these life events to happen and you got no brotherhood. You got mm. nobody to say, hey, man, I got your back. I'm coming to get you flat tire. Hey, no matter what, I'm here for you. You don't want to be that guy because you've been, you haven't invested in brotherhood. And so now you're in a time of need, you ain't got nothing to draw on. It's kind of like having a savings account. I mean, you're saving all this money because something may happen, but you want I'd rather have savings than not have savings, then, then you have a situation, and then now you're in a situation where you just screw. So I always say brotherhood is essential. It's mm -hmm. not something that is like a, a temporary thing. I, I think brotherhood is essential, but I want to talk a little bit about, uh, for me, how, like, brotherhood can transform from just like hanging out to kind of having like what I learned from somebody that was near dear to my heart about social portfolios, like having an array of people that you can connect with on different things. Case in point, for my example, I got brothers in my life that I can just talk business with. We just talk business and that's it. When you talk business, that's it. I have some guys, we can talk sports, we can talk about relationships, we can talk about books, certain books that we read and that's it. Some guys, man, we just shoot the breeze, crack jokes, laugh, and that's it. So I have a little bit of everything for different parts of my life. And I like it that way because I'm not putting unfair, unrealistic expectation on them. And they're not putting those unrealistic expectations on me. And we could just do the thing that we both like together. And that's it. But my mm -hmm. core group of guys, we got to be like like minded in so many ways because that's where the true growth is going to happen. No, even to your point, I like me, like there are certain things to me I really don't, I really don't connect on. Like we've been cool for a long time, but like, you know, when you're talking about like certain business aspects, I, I'm in a completely different field, you know? So he's going to have his different circle of different people that, and mentors that are different than what I have, you know? And then sometimes I know you, you've been, you've been big on funnels, you've been on a lot. So I don't, you know, financial coaching, I don't, I'm not in that world. So, you know, like you would tell me certain things, I'd be happy for you, but if you want to have a more in-depth conversation, there's a certain group of people you're going to connect with. You know, obviously yeah. for me, nonprofit and some of the construction stuff, there's a whole different group of people I'm going to connect with to talk about those different things. So sometimes it's like, you may just, like sometimes I already tell me about a funnel or something he's excited about. I'm just listening. You know, I might get my, some of my opinion it may not be as always as valuable as somebody else working in the field, you know, but it's kind of like, it, it's just more so like, okay, I'm happy to see he's excited about something. You know, I think like, you know, you know, I think, uh, even if I can't really understand it and vice versa. We just sit and listen. Oh man, that's cool, bro. We can go celebrate. 
you know so I, I think I think even we you know even the way we you know, we have two different styles you know we talk about like family as an administration we have two different types of administrations but it it is we kind of say okay this is your lane is what you're doing this is what I'm doing and we kind of connect and I, th I think to kind of end it man I think because I know a lot of people are very like tangible they think about it I'm just kind of giving examples of a situation what active brotherhood is versus what passive brotherhood looks in that situation so uh, one thing I say going out to eat is I'll start on a small level if you go out to eat with a group of with a dude or two or three dudes and you know you don't remember who paid what last time and y'all just all kind of take care of each other that's active brotherhood that's positive you know you know passive or weak brotherhood is the same person's paying you know the waitress asks you know you say separate checks and it's three of y'all the meal was only 57 dollars. <laughs> you, you see what i'm saying that's passive brotherhood you got another scenario ivory that comes to mind <laughs> well yeah I, I, that's funny you say that you, you're absolutely right about that i think when you and i we we just do it so often like we when we go out to dinner or go out yeah. somewhere we just automatically sometimes we fight over the bill like hey man i, I got it bro no no i got it i got it and, and that's that's that that brotherhood chemistry that we built over time. And you're right. I mean, on a lower level, I would say even, you know, within that is just doing like weekly check ins with somebody that you that that's one of your brothers. Maybe that's a call. Maybe that's a text. Maybe that's a, a, a some type of connection to say, hey, man, what's going on in your world? Or what I like to ask is, is like, hey, what's new and exciting? What's new mm -hmm. and exciting? Because when you get into somebody's world. You want to know what's new for them because people are, are passionate about like something that's new or exciting. And then when you can ask those certain questions, that shows that you care. You got some level of like you want to know what's going on in this person's life. Because I, I tell you what, man, like I said, I, and I say this and I say this all the time. We need each other as brothers. And if you're isolated right now, you're a lone wolf type brother and you just you just passively have friends where you just text them every now and then. Hey, ha you text them happy birthday. Try calling them and say happy birthday. Try, you know, inviting them out somewhere or try actually physically being connected in some type of unit. So, I mean, I'm a religious guy. So I, I would say one of the places you can go to actually start meeting new guys and, you know, different people, try going to church, right? Go to church and just, just see if you can connect with some brothers there. Or maybe you try doing things, events that, that you like. Like if you like paintballing, you like playing basketball, go to the basketball court, right? Go where other people are going to be. And that's where you can make some real cool connections and just try to connect with people on a physical level in terms of like physically being with them and also in an emotional level, what's going on in their, in, in their lives. Yeah. Yeah. And it, that, I completely agree, man. And it kind of makes me think about even like from a medium aspect, but it's kind of more so like, like you said, I really like checking in with each other. Right. You know, and, and I think the, 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 the real thing you really want with brotherhood is high end brotherhood, like high level, high level brotherhood is, you know, you know, you know, like I think it's, it's it leads into money and careers, not lending money, but like, hey, man, you know, like, you know, like, hey, man, I like there's a program where you can get special support for your house. And I know you did that. It might be like, hey, man, I know you in construction. You know, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, yeah, it's like, hey, man, I know you're construction, man. I know about this opportunity, man, is to get into this union. You should take it. Hey, man, it's this contract. We can't get it, but I'm going to refer you, man. This is what you need. That's high-level brotherhood. You know, high-level brotherhood may be like, hey, man, I know you, you, do, you do renovations. You know, man, like, I, I want to support, you know, like, hey, man, you know, like, I got three or $4,000. I was just going to just casually invest and kind of try something out. I invest in what you're doing. That's high-level brotherhood. Um, you know, and I think without the smaller steps, you can't get into higher level brotherhood at all. Because I think higher level brotherhood is when you start getting bigger opportunities. And higher level brotherhood is the kind of situation where you, where you pull your to the side, your friend's side, man, and say, hey, man, you know, um, I know you're going through the situation. Protect yourself this, 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 and that way. Hey, man, you know, like, I know you're getting married. I don't know if that's the right one for you. Or, you know, like, hey, man, I think you should do this. Or, hey, man, like, nah, man, I don't think you should buy the house, man. Looking at your budget, it might be too much. Like that's high level brotherhood. High level brotherhood increases your quality of life. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's 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 why those important steps, you know, you know, um, and that's pretty much the last thing I said. It's just we want to get to high level brotherhood because that's how you start making bigger moves. High level brotherhood is, you know, your friend starts a business, he, he you know, his business is generating a million dollars and you hit the hard times, he can hire you on, you know, you got some skill sets and he can pay you to do some things. Yeah, yeah. High level brotherhood can change your life. I mean, like my massive contracts, just just it can save your life in so many ways. It can save your relationships and save you from making a lot of mistakes. I mean, let's keep it real. I mean, 
everybody needs somebody. That's that's all we're saying. Everybody needs somebody. Find your tribe and nurture it. And it's one quote. It's a quote that says, the grass is not greener on the other side. It's greener where you water it. So I just encourage you, if you're watching this video, water the grass that you already got, the brothers that's already in your life. Try, try to nurture those relationships and do some of these things that we, we mentioned. I mean, we're still working on this thing. We're a work yeah. in progress. I mean, we got businesses and families and, and careers and, and getting certification up in our leveling ourselves up. It's, it's tough, right? But it's important because, again, when you have those life events happen, you don't want to be doing that by yourself. I, I seen it. I seen it in my uncle. And I'll just close with this one on my end. Like, I had an uncle. He was like really, he was a selfish dude. Like just never. Um, well, he was my god uncle. He wasn't my real uncle, but he was my god uncle. But he was a selfish, selfish guy. He only cared about what made him happy and, and things that made his life better. And he died, unfortunately, he died alone. He died somewhere alone by himself. And nobody really cared because he didn't invest in others. And so people didn't feel that emotional connection to say, you know what? I, I want to pay my last tribute to this guy. And he died by himself. And, and I, that just always rung in the back of my head that I don't want to be that guy to be to go out like that by myself. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then you know, exactly. No, I, I completely agree, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, then, and then sometimes I hate to sound harsh, but sometimes that's the consequence. You know, that's yep. the consequence. You know, but man, it was good. You know, like you know, make sure you if you like the video, you know, hit the like button, subscribe, man, and 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 please don't be a passive brother, man. Please, please don't be a passive brother, bro. <laughs> Take care, everybody. All right, peace.